Shields up, Iron Breakers. Welcome back to Dragon's Dogma 2, and today we're going to be talking about the Trickster Vocation. Now, the main reason why I wanted to make this particular video is because ever since I've done the analysis of the Trickster gameplay footage from IGN, I've received a lot of comments from my community of people indicating that they feel that this is a gimmick vocation or something that requires a significant amount of setup to get going. Now, since then, I've actually gotten to play the game in the Capcom offices, and I feel like that is not really the case. And I wanted to give you guys a better explanation of what you can expect if you plan on potentially trying out the trickster vocation. So let's start with the basics. The standard attack for the trickster basically swings the sensor around and you can hit enemies with it, but I don't actually think it deals that much damage from my experience. However, what it does is it gets you aggro of those enemies. And you might be wondering, well, why would I want to get aggro from enemies? And the reasoning is your secondary attack, which is called Ephigial Incense. And what that does is it basically summons a simulacrum. So all of the aggro that you deal is going to transfer from you onto the simulacrum so the more you hit enemies with your basic attacks the more aggro they're going to get but not towards you towards the simulacrum and then the important part of this is that your vocation ability allows you to move the simulacrum to your current location so if you think about it the whole idea is that you're going to be running around Put down a simulacrum, which is fairly easy to cast. It's not like something that's super limited or anything like that. So you can just place down a new one whenever a simulacrum dies. The one thing is it does take you a little bit of time to cast. So you do have to plan it out just a smidge to make sure that you have enough time to cast it in case enemies are coming at you really fast. You want to have one already in place and ready to go. And then you can move it around to whatever location you need to in order to gain advantages or even to delay enemies getting to the place where the aggro is coming from. Because while the enemies are not attacking you or not attacking your pawns, everybody is just dealing free damage. And that's kind of like one of the main mechanics of the trickster. Because like I said, this goes right down to his basic attack. His basic attack doesn't even, at least to me, doesn't seem to deal that much damage. And I say it doesn't seem to deal damage because the preview build didn't have any damage numbers. And I don't think that damage numbers are going to be a thing in Dragon's Dogma 2. But yeah, that's the point. You're going to be summoning this simulacrum and then you're going to be hitting things in order to actually gain aggro. Except... You're not really going to be hitting things because you're going to be getting a core skill that is called Drifting Broom. And what that does is it enables you to charge the trickster attack to the point where rather than hitting things with your sensor, you can just shoot out a projectile, which is basically a little piece of aggro that goes out and hits enemies. And on top of it, you also have uh, another uh, a weapon skill that is called Sweeping Shroud, wherein your, your trickster basically spins around and throws out a bunch of smoke, and anything that gets touched by that smoke is going to, you know, accrue a large amount of aggro that is going to make them go towards your simulacrum. So as you can imagine, the whole idea of the trickster is to get things to aggro onto this little effigy thing. And as things are aggroed on the effigy thing, your pawns and yourself, you have free reign to do whatever you feel like doing. Now, like I said, initially, this seems like it requires a bit of setup, but one of the things that I would point out is rather than set up what you need to is to be aware of where you are and where your pawns are. Because one of the mistakes that I made when I was playing the preview was, you know, I'm rushing, I'm trying to get a bunch of gameplay footage. So I run off of a cliff, not too tall of a cliff, but a cliff that I knew I was going to take some damage. And what happens is I fell, I took a little bit of damage, not really a big deal, and I'm running forwards because I'm, again, trying to capture footage as fast as possible. The one thing that I forget is that pawns don't throw themselves off of cliffs chasing after you so my pawns were lagging behind significantly and i ran into a group of goblins and that's when i realized oh without my pawns i'm extremely vulnerable whereas with other vocations you can kind of like make do until your pawns catch up with you when it comes to the trickster without your pawns you really don't have a whole lot of stuff to work with so that's one of the things that you got to keep in mind but so long as you keep this in mind and you always keep your pawns close to you, because your pawns are going to be your main source of damage, then you should be just fine. Now, let's talk a little bit more about some of the core skills that you have as a trickster. So we talked about Drifting Broom, which is basically a core skill that enables the charging of the standard attack that lets you shoot out projectiles of smoke, which gives you aggro from range so that you don't actually have to engage in melee combat. 
Then there's another one called Mending Vapor. So what this does is it heals your simulacrum when you beckon it. So you can hold down your vocation ability, which is your R1 or your bumper button. And as you hold it down, your simulacrum is basically chasing after you. So when you use that, your Mending Vapor is going to be healing it. And you might be thinking, why do I have to heal it? You don't, but if it dies, then you have to make a new one, which takes a little bit of time. So ideally, you want to keep the simulacrum alive so that you don't have to waste stamina casting up a new simulacrum not to mention that you know simulacrum dies the aggro resets and they start attacking your pawns or attacking you so you want to try to keep it alive so having mending vapor around means you can basically keep the button pressed the simulacrum will follow right behind you which also makes you vulnerable because they're aggroing onto the simulacrum and they might hit you even unintentionally so you got to keep that in mind but you can heal it and then you can drop it off somewhere else then there's also the effigial quick burn which makes it so that you can cast the simulacrum a little bit faster so it makes that casting animation faster it still takes a little bit so don't think that oh now i can just press the button and boom he's out but you know you can still cast it. it's fine and then you have Trailing Aroma, which allows your Simulacrum to stay further away from you, just increases the distance. So just in case you're trying to get away from monsters, it will last a little bit longer uh, while you are running away from your Simulacrum, which is also good. In terms of skills, you have your Sweeping Shroud, which I've already mentioned. It's basically an AoE attack that aggros everything around you towards the Simulacrum. Then you have the Delusionary Screen, which is basically a wall that you can put in front of you. It's a wall of smoke. And for the monsters, it seems like a real wall but the reality is that there's nothing there it's an illusion so the monsters just see a wall they don't see you so you can kind of use it to block off certain paths and the monsters won't actually cross it because they think that there is a wall there however if you cast the wall and the monster's already in the middle of an attack he might go through the wall but at that point you can go through the wall yourself to the opposite side and the monster will still have to walk around the wall so it's one of the things to keep in mind but it's a really neat ability for you to kind of hide behind so that you can do your uh, astral projection which we'll talk about in just a bit then you have your aromatic rally now what this does it is a damage buff your allies will keep fighting through death. So even if they die, they'll fight on a little bit um, with this damage buff for your allies. And their HP also starts lowering. And you might be thinking, well, what is the advantage of this particular buff? It is massive. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make a prediction, which I could be wrong, but I think that a lot of warfarers are going to have um, Trickster to use this specific skill because that damage buff felt that significant. So to give you guys an idea, I used this when I was fighting the golem and my pawns just shredded through the golem's health. I was like, whoa, what is going on here? This damage is absolutely insane. But again, you got to keep in mind that they also start losing HP whenever you use this. So even though you can spam this, they're also taking damage, so you're going to need a pawn with some kind of healing ability to keep them up, because I don't know if the trickster himself is going to have healing abilities, because I haven't really seen all of the trickster's abilities, right? We just know that he does have the buff, and it's very, very powerful. Now, another one of his skills is going to be the SPL Incense. So you've probably already seen this in the IGN gameplay. It's basically an astral projection where you can project yourself and you can, you know, float around. Now, the important thing about this astral projection is that you can move your simulacrum wherever you want by just pressing your vocation uh, skill. So an interesting thing that I did was I was fighting a bunch of goblins and the goblins were kind of swarming me a little bit. So I moved just a little bit away. I cast the simulacrum and then I cast SPL incense, move myself a little bit into the air, and then I move the simulacrum to the air where it's out of reach of the goblins, but close enough where they can still see it. And they stopped attacking me. They're just like, huh, how do I get up there? How do I get up to the thing to kill it? But they can't. I'm assuming that some of the goblins will start throwing rocks at it, but in that situation, they didn't. They were just flabbergasted trying to figure out a way to path to where the thing was, but you couldn't because it's in the middle of the air, which is pretty cool. I also did that with the griffin to a little bit of a less of an effect because the griffin can just fly and swat it out of the air. But it's an interesting thing to play around in, and the thing is that you can't really see through the gameplay. 
uh, which is people might think, oh, but this just feels so gimmicky the way that all of this kind of like works together. It doesn't feel like it'd be intuitive. It is. It's actually super simple. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you can't move too far away from your pawns because otherwise you're going to get screwed over. This is one of the things that I played with a lot. I would basically set myself up. I would give all of the aggro to the simulacrum somewhere a little bit away from the monster so that the monster wouldn't instantly be able to reach the simulacrum. Then I would put a wall in front of me so that the monsters couldn't see me. And then I would go uh, the Espiel incense and I would just run around and I would keep summoning the simulacrum to different locations. And so the monster is just getting confused trying to figure out how to get to the simulacrum to kill it because that's where all of its aggro is. And in the meantime, your pawns are just like destroying this thing. And it's a very interesting play style that you can do like this. But again, I'm going to be very curious to see what are all of the other abilities that we're going to have uh, when we use this. So one of the ones that was also showcased in, I believe, the IGN footage, it was Dragon Delusion. Now, Dragon Delusion is the one where he summons up the big dragon head. And what that does, it's not really damage, but it terrifies all of your enemies. So enemies get like staggered whenever you do that, which is another aspect of manipulating your enemies, getting them to be terrified. They're going to be standing still and your pawns can just go ham and beat the crap out of it. So in all essence, I feel like Trickster is more of a crowd control class, a CC class than anything else. You're going to be the one that's going to be manipulating the battlefield. And it actually feels like a very interesting playstyle. I'm actually super tempted to play more Trickster, but the reality is the Mystic Spear hand spoke so much more to me, but I definitely wanted to show people. I mean, I say show, I can't even show that much gameplay, but I wanted to assure you that it is not a gimmicky thing that feels super unintuitive to play. It was actually very intuitive the way that they set it up, and I was very surprised at how easy it was for me to get the grips with it and understand how the vocation works. In terms of augments, I only got to see two of them. There's one that gives you more materials whenever you craft something. You there's a chance of you getting more of the thing that you crafted. And then there's one that makes it easier for you to find seeker totems uh, as this class if you want to use those augments. But there's probably going to be a lot more stuff that is going to be revealed in um, in future videos. There are a couple of more mechanics that I didn't really get to see used with the exception of the, the IGN one where besides the wall, you can also make a little piece of ground uh, that looks like there's ground there despite the fact that it's not. And then you can place your um, your simulacrum on top of it and, you know, goblins will throw themselves at it because they think there there's ground there and then they'll die uh but there was also another mechanic that i was talking with uh paradise from eric's gaming earlier today and he was saying that there's some type of possession mechanic that you can kind of do i didn't really get to experience that one but it's apparently something where you can put the simulacrum inside an enemy and the other enemies will go ahead and attack it. Now, I wonder if you can do that to big targets or not or how that works. It'll be interesting to see. But I think that the trickster has a lot more depth to it than what people think at this point. And it was actually a, a very interesting playtime experience. But yeah, I just want to let you guys know about it. Let me know how you feel about the trickster in the comment section down below. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.